Hi, I'm Mercedes Fobb at the new Captured on Canvas studio. Welcome to Picture This. For today's painting, picture this. We're going to do a spooky painting for Halloween. It's going to be three jack-o'-lanterns, all different colors and all different faces, even some cobwebs. But to make it that much more awesome, it's going to be glowing underneath the black light with some fluorescent paint. Before we get started, we'll make sure we have everything sitting in front of us. Most importantly, on my easel, I'm going to have a blank 16 by 20 going horizontal today. For my paint brushes, I'm going to be using my favorite three. My nice large flat tip brush, my middle size angular brush, and last but not least, my tiniest brush for a tiny detail. On my paint palette, I am going to be having these following colors. A lot of black, white, and my fluorescent colors. Fluorescent red, but I'm going to call it pink. Fluorescent yellow and fluorescent blue. And also don't forget to a cup of water as well as a sponge or paper towel for keeping those brushes clean. Typically when I start a painting, I start with the background and paint the closest thing last. But I don't want to take away from the vibrance of those black lit colors. So I am going to go ahead and start with what's most important and it's those jack-o'-lanterns. So I'm going to be using my largest brush and prepare my middle sized pump or the middle pumpkin. Uh, with that, I am going to make it just orange. So with, the, with that big brush, I'm going to start with a big scoop of yellow and plop that in the middle of my palette and add a little bit of that fluorescent pink or fluorescent red, I always confuse that, um, and mix it together until you get a nice orange color. So with this color, once you got a nice orange, I'm going to start with a couple dots. I always think it's a lot easier instead of just a winging it when you draw on the canvas. So my first dot is going to be right where the stem of that middle can or that little pumpkin is going to be. And that is going to be about a hand's width down from the top, maybe three to four inches centered left and right. And I'll start with that one dot there. Just to kind of find my center at the bottom, I'm going to make one more dot right at the bottom of my canvas. Sometimes what I like to do is actually take that canvas, put it up on the ledge. Then I can get to the bottom a little bit easier. And I'm going to decide how wide I want this pumpkin to be. I'm going to go approximately about a hand's width to the left and to the right and make a mark there. So now I got the width of the bottom of my pumpkin. Sometimes pumpkins can be a little challenging to draw. I do know that. So I'm going to help explain this the best I can. So up at the top, I always like to think of it like a heart, but this one, I'm going to make it kind of a unique shape. It's going to be like a pear shape or even like a gourd. So from here, I'm going to make the top left part of my heart. And instead of coming down to a point like a heart, I'm going to go straight down and then just flare out a little bit beyond that bottom dot and swoop it back in. So I got the left side of my pumpkin. I'm going to mirror that on the right side. So start with that top of the heart, coming straight down, and then flare out just a little bit beyond that point and come down into that bottom dot. And now we can color it in. And while it's wet, we're going to add in the creases of our pumpkin. So for the creases of my pumpkin, I'm going to be using just that fluorescent red, so a little bit on the end of my brush. And I'm going to be holding my brush standing up vertically, so that when I go down, it's going to make a nice thin line. So I'm going to start with that middle shape uh, with the creases. I always think of it like a football shape. So it's always going to start right up at the top where that stem is going to be. So from here, I'm going to curve out to the left a little bit, coming down and just kind of mimic that pear shape and go all the way down. I'm going to do the same thing for the right side, starting from that stem, 
straight down and a little flare out to the right. And again, you could always do these on the bottom, you know, continue it, continuing it around the bottom of the canvas. But then I'm going to add as many more creases as I can. I think I'm only going to be able to fit one more to the left and to the right. So there is pumpkin number one. What's really nice about it, if you don't like how this one turns out, at least you get two and three more times to try this. So we're gonna go ahead and clean off our brush. So for my right pumpkin, I'm gonna be mixing purple. To do that, I always like to start with my blue. So I'm gonna take a good scoop of blue, still with that same brush, that nice large flat one, place that somewhere in my palette. This time maybe I'll mix a little bit more, a little bit more than a quarter. Then I'm gonna take a good healthy scoop of that fluorescent red and mix that in. And you can decide what shade of purple you like. So with this, we're gonna do exactly kind of those same steps, but over here on the right side. I'm gonna start with that point where the stem is gonna be for my pumpkin. It's gonna be pretty much really centered from the left side of this pumpkin and the right side of this canvas and about halfway up on the canvas. So just kind of somewhere in there. What's really nice about it is we don't really have to draw out the whole pumpkin this time. For the left side, it's just gonna be that top of the heart and stopping right at the first uh, pumpkin. And then for the right, I'm gonna do just that bump and then if it goes off the canvas, that's right where we're gonna go. Then if you feel that there'll be a little corner down here, you may add that. I think I always draw this and then I always color it in anyways, but you know, it's good to play it safe. Then we're gonna color it in the same way we did before. Okay, so now we're gonna add the creases in with that pumpkin, exactly like we did before. I'm gonna keep that brush without even washing it and I'm just gonna get a little bit of that pink on there and use it uh, vertically again to add in those little creases. Now we can clean off our brush. For the third one on the far, far left, I'm gonna be doing a green. So for green, I like to start with yellow. I like to start with that lighter color. So with that, I'm gonna take a big old healthy scoop of the yellow Plop that on my palette, maybe take a little bit more, and then we're gonna add just a little bit of blue on the corner of our brush and mix that in. Okay, so again, we're gonna do all of those same steps. So we're gonna start with that dot where that stem is gonna be, and that is gonna be about halfway up on the canvas and centered from that jack-o'-lantern to the left side of the canvas. So starting with that dot there, this one you can choose to make the same shape as this one, but if you want to bring back this shape, you can do that as well. So for me, I'm just going to bump it up and mimic that first pumpkin shape coming down and then flaring out for that left side. And then for the right side, it's going to be a lot easier. It's just going to be a bump up and straight down until you meet that first jack-o'-lantern. Then I'm going to just trace along this edge here and nice long brush strokes, coloring it in. And there we have it. We're gonna let that dry for a little bit, so we'll resume our next step after the break. Welcome back to Picture This. I have just painted my three jack-o'-lanterns, so now I'm gonna start with the background of my canvas. I'm gonna be still using that nice large flat tip brush and just using black, I'm gonna color in the rest of the canvas. With the black though, 
What's going to be the most challenging part is tracing around each of those jack-o'-lanterns to start. So I like to use that thin side of the brush to get that nice clean edge between where those pumpkins are and the background. And this is one of those things that definitely takes more concentration than you think it's going to because it's basically like outlining. So what I like to do is remember to breathe. People laugh at me, but there's a lot of times that even I've caught myself holding my breath. And again, just make sure not to glob it on too thick. You know, try to go over it, blend in that extra paint, follow along the best you can. Once we get it all black, we're going to go ahead and clean off that large brush. So for our next step, I'm going to be using my middle size angular brush. I really like this brush for outlining uh, because it holds more paint. Sometimes people don't like it though because it tends to also make larger outlines. If that's the case for you, you can always use your tiniest brush. So I always say whatever works best for you. With outlining though, I always like to water down my black a little bit. So with this brush, I'm going to take a little bit of black to the side. And this is important to do that because you don't want to water down all of that. It would take quite a bit. So I'm going to take this brush, dip it in my cup of water, and mix it in. Trying to keep it in a nice little pile again. We just want it to be a little bit more fluid. So sometimes what I do is I practice a line on my palette to make sure it's not down, watered down too much. So if it dries nice and clean, you're good to go. If it's kind of separating or kind of a big puddle, then you watered it too much. So you want to add more paint to it. So with this, I'm going to just outline a little bit in between the pumpkins to kind of break them up between each other. So I'm going to follow that orange pumpkin nice and high here, and then I'm going to carry it down right in between the two on this left side. I might go over it just to darken it up a little bit. Looks like I got to water it down just a little bit more. Watering it down definitely helps fill in those little pockets in the canvas. And then we can do the right side. Again, starting up a little bit above that purple pumpkin. And then continuing down. I always like to use my pinky as a guide here. Helps me get that steadier hand. And then we're going to continue with that black and add in the creases. So on the top side of each of those shadows is where we're going to do the outlining. So above the blue on the green pumpkin, we're going to outline it. And as I come about halfway down, I'm going to pull my brush away from the canvas, to make it naturally just disappear into a fine point. And I'm going to do that for each of these creases because I don't want it to be completely outlined. And if there's any other th like edges that you want to refine a little bit from that large brush when we did the background, now would be your time. Nice light pressure again. If there's any little areas or little pockets that still show through the black, which can always happen, you can always fill those in at this time as well. Before we'll have to let this dry before our next step. Alrighty, so we're going to let this dry a little bit again before we do our next step. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Picture This. Now that I just finished my background and outlining my jack-o'-lanterns, I'm going to go ahead and start with carving the jack-o'-lanterns. What's really fun with this, it's just simple. You paint them on. You don't have to do the carving and pulling out the guts. 
So we're going to be using that middle size brush and with the black, I'm going to start with my middle, middle pumpkin. I always like giving them a little bit of a unique look. So usually you have your triangle eyes, your triangle nose, and that big smile, but I always like to make little angles to my triangles, giving them a little bit more character. So I'm gonna start pretty high on my middle pumpkin, and I'm gonna start with the kind of upper corners of where I want those triangle eyes. So I'd say they're about a hand's width down from the top and about a finger's width apart right up at the top there. So with this, I'm gonna draw a straight line down for each of those and stop about halfway down on my pumpkin. Now technically you could say those are eyes, but we're gonna add a little bit more to it. So from the top, I'm going to angle out, and with this, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit lower than that first line. Kinda of get them some droopy eyes here. Doing the same thing for the right, angling out and down, keeping it pretty, pretty the same level, I guess. Then I'm gonna connect across the bottom, and now I got those nice big triangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and color these in. Nice long brush strokes. Again, making sure not to glob it. Helps that paint dry a little bit quicker. And we'll do that for the other one. And for the nose, it's going to be a smaller triangle centered underneath the eyes. And sometimes I just like to make a little bit of roundness to that triangle as well. So I'm going to start with that dot for the top. It's going to angle out, maybe just a slight outward curve to it. Always gives it a unique shape. And then for the bottom, I might just kind of arch it up and color it in. Now those were the easy steps with the jack-o'-lantern. The toughest part is always that mouth. It's getting it symmetrical. Um, so I'm going to show you how I like to do it to minimize that confusion and keeping it symmetrical as we can. So I'm gonna start with a dot for the upper corners of my grin, up far near the left and right side of the eyes. And because of the teeth, I like to make kind of a dashed line. So however many gaps you have is how many teeth you're gonna have. So I'm just gonna do probably about two. So from here, I'm just gonna smile down, skip, draw another little line, skip, and then from here, I'm gonna continue all the way back up to that far side. So now I'm gonna make kind of a banana shape. And where I have the gap this time is gonna be alternate. Uh, so this tooth might be up between those gaps. So showing you here, I'm gonna start from this corner, coming down. I might put a tooth right up high, why not? So I want this to be solid where that other tooth is gonna be on the upper side. I'm gonna stop there. Continue, and maybe we'll add one more on this right side. And then as we get up close, we're gonna bring it in nice and close to that little point for the other side of that smile. Now I can add in the teeth. The teeth, you can do kind of square teeth, you can also do triangle teeth, whatever floats your boat. So for this one, I might add a little fang tooth, so it can just be a little angle here and an angle down. Now, don't confuse it. You can touch the other side of the mouth. That's okay, because once you color this in black, you will see that that's all part of the open part of the mouth. So for here, I'm gonna add that square tooth. And it's easy to color it in as you go, so you don't get confused. So this space between these two teeth, I'll color it in. And then right here, maybe I'll add another fang tooth. Connecting left and bottom, coloring this in. And maybe another square tooth, why not? Right over here, coloring it in. And then maybe one more little triangle tooth over here and then color in that little corner up there as well. And right in between. And if you want it easier, you can always make less teeth. You can always do a different type of smile. Sometimes they don't have any teeth and that's okay too. So there he is. We're gonna do that same thing now for the left pumpkin.
So for the purple pumpkin, I do like to change it up a little bit. For the triangles, again, I'm going to just kind of keep it more of a triangle eye, but this time I'm going to make arches at the bottom, giving them a whole different expression. So up near the top, kind of by that left and right crease is where I'm going to have the points of my eyes. And from here, I'm just going to make that right side of the triangle and the left side of the triangle kind of drooping down. And then for the right eye, the same deal. And then across the bottom, I'm going to arch it up for both of those eyes and color it in. And then for the eye on this guy, it's just going to be a small little triangle, maybe a little arch on the bottom to kind of match his eyes. And instead of making out all of those little teeth, we may as well do the zigzag. It's kind of got more of an angry, scarier face. So using that middle size brush, I'm going to hold it vertically, starting, I'm going to start on the right side this time, coming down, and then I'm going to zigzag. And then bring it across the bottom, again, trying to keep it coming down through the middle. And then as we go up to the right, we're going to bring it up a little bit with each brush stroke. Trying to keep those little points there. Sometimes I kind of got to go back and refine it a little bit. All right, so there are our faces. Now we're going to go ahead and clean off our brush. So with the white, we're going to use really light pressure and make those nice thin lines to make the webs. Now you can do this however. I mean, I always explain just exactly how I like to paint it, but you know, you can put it wherever works best for you and your piece. So I'm going to start with my first cluster that's up here in the upper corner. Again, leading with the short side of my brush. Sometimes the round brush work, or the small round brush works better. But I'm just going to kind of swoop it down right into that pumpkin, one just going right above. And I'll have a stem there later that it can connect to. And then I'll have one more up here and maybe a couple little lines kind of going off to the side. And I always like to make sure they're coming out wider so they're getting further away from each other like a web usually would. And then in between each section, I make little frowns, so really light pressure. Just add those little arches, and I'm just using barely the tip of my brush. Okay, so now I'm going to clean off my brush. So for the stems, I am going to use that metallic copper with my middle size brush. I like this because it gives it kind of a a little shimmer, especially for the lit jack-o'-lantern. So with that metallic copper, I'm gonna just make those stems right up at the center of each of my pumpkins. And this, you can really get creative with shapes as well. For the middle pumpkin, I'm just gonna have a little angle or curve going up for the left and to the right. But I like to add a little branch off of this one. Kind of swooping over to the right and a big smile from the point back into the main part of the stem. And then coloring it in with nice long brush strokes. And then I'm going to do this for the left and right pumpkin. These I like to make a little more short, a little more simple, just kind of straight across the top. And then color it in solid. And one more thing I like to do with this color is add a little shadow at the bottom of my orange pumpkin. So just using the width of my brush, I just flick up from the bottom. And you notice how more three-dimensional it looks? Again, keeping it kind of curved out to the left as you're to the left, straighten it out as you go through the middle, and then as you go to the right, we're going to curve it out to the right. It's just that little bit of something. And I only do this to the orange pumpkin because that copper really complements the orange. Technically, you could do it to the other ones, but I, I just kind of like doing it just to the orange one. You could even continue it up the sides if you'd like a little bit. Maybe you like sparkles. This color's fun to play with then. And then we're going to go ahead and clean off our brush. So our final steps here, we're getting close. 
We're gonna add those curly green vines. So with the green, I have a little bit left, but I'm gonna make some more. Take some of that yellow and add a little bit more blue. So with this, we're just gonna use that middle size brush or the tiny brush, whatever works best for you. I'm gonna start up next to the stem and just kind of swirl around. We're gonna go ahead and clean off our brush. We're gonna use a little bit of white to add some highlight. So again, with that same brush, using the thin side of it with some white. I'm gonna add some little highlights just around the uh, tops of each section of my pumpkins, kind of contours there. Just kind of a quick little flicker motion, just on the inner part, kind of next to the crease of that blue or that pink. And the purple, you can really see it a little bit more. You can add some kind of throughout the bottom of the pumpkin if you wish. Just kind of, again, makes it look less flat. What's so cool about this, too, if you have it under the black light, the white looks seriously purple. It's so cool. All right, I feel pretty good about that. Now, even if I have a little bit of white, I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow to the side and do the final favorite part and that is going to be adding that glow throughout the eyes, the nose, and the smiles, making them look like there's actually a candle. So I'm just going to use that thin side of the brush again and add one highlight on just one side of the eyes and even at the bottom. And you see how it just makes it so much less flat. All right, and one more thing, if you want to use either the white or the yellow, you can add what, just a little highlight to the stem, so across the top. And something I like to do is add these little curled lines here, kind of give it that twisted look. So I add a dash across the top and just little ankled lines, maybe along one side of the stem. Again, there's really not a right or wrong. It's just so that it doesn't look so flat and to kind of bring it out from that dark background. Okay, so before I think I'm done with my masterpiece, I always make sure to sign my work. So this would be a time I definitely use that tiny brush. I always like to sign in the lower right corner because then it's out of the way, not distracting you from my painting. And there it is. Thank you for following along with me, Mercedes, at the Captured on Canvas Studio. We'll see you next time on Picture This.